Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Today we are going to be talking about one of the more unique drills that I've ever featured on the channel. So let's go ahead and get right into that on Tinker with Tools. Now when it comes to cordless drills, oftentimes you're going to find very similar feature sets on a lot of the drills. Most drills are going to have two speeds, they're going to have an adjustable clutch, but those aren't quite the features I'm talking about that are unique to this drill. You see it is a two-speed drill, it does have all those different things, but the way that it does them and how it works is just a little bit different, so I want to go ahead and cover it. Now the drill I want to talk about tonight is going to be this from Metabo. This is the Metabo SB18 LTX BLI. Now in an effort to clear up some confusion, I want to talk about a little bit of history about Metabo, this company, the German Metabo. Back in 1923, Albert Schnitzler developed his own hand drill and he called it this. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but from that the name Metabo was born and for years Metabo has produced world-renowned tools, but back in 2016 they were actually acquired by Hitachi Koki, which is a Japanese tool company that most of us here in the United States knew previously under the name Hitachi. In 2018, Hitachi Koki decided to undergo a rebranding of their tools under the name Metabo HPT in North America and Haikoki in other territories. So now you have three companies, Haikoki, Metabo HPT, and Metabo that are all related. And you would think that Metabo and Metabo HPT are the most closely related, but it's actually Haikoki and Metabo HPT. So what we're talking about tonight is German Metabo. These tools are still made by Metabo as its own company. So now what makes this drill so unique and so particular? First and foremost is going to be this silver ring right up here. It looks strange. There's a gap between it and the chuck. It is really unlike any drill you've ever seen. And at first I thought that's an interesting way to attach the auxiliary handle. But thanks to one of you viewers, I was quickly instructed that the main purpose of this is because that over in Germany and Europe, it is popular to have these drills be able to be chucked up into a drill press of sorts. We'll have a picture on the screen. And so this is actually where you would actually attach that. And then this drill would actually become the motor behind your drill press. Now it's obviously not some super heavy duty drill press, but at the same time, it's also not like the right angle drill guide like some of you have seen if you do woodworking. Metabo makes several different models of this drill, but some of them are much more dedicated towards metal tapping or metal drilling. And having that same functionality on those drills makes a lot more sense when you start to think about their actual intended purpose. Now that does add some length to the tool. This is a longer drill. It is over eight inches long. And so even though it is long, it's not a big bulky or heavy drill. It's just a little bit front heavy because of the extra length that it's got out here and the way it causes differences in the balance in my opinion. Now the next difference between this and other kind of standard drills is going to be the placement of the clutch adjustment which we're all kind of used to the normal standard style of the clutch ring up here. That's been moved to this wheel down here on the base of the tool. And right off the bat, you're going to notice it still has a drill mode where you're going to get all of your power and all your speed with no intervention from the clutch and then 10 different individual clutch settings that you can adjust. This is very clearly an electronic clutch. I know a lot, a lot of people instantly shiver when they hear the name electronic clutch, but this one actually does seem to work pretty well and actually is really nice in terms of how it operates. and it really is quite consistent in how it works and very nice. The other thing about the clutch is in each of the different positions, especially between speed one and speed two, if you are down in speed one, clutch position one, it really tones back the torque and the speed of the drill and just makes it super easy to do exactly what you want with the tool. We're not done with that because there is also the impulse mode. If I'm being honest, when I first heard about this, it seemed more like a gimmick than an actual useful feature because what it does is it provides short bursts of power and speed to the drill when you're in that mode so that you're going to prevent cam out for smaller, more delicate fasteners. The 
more I've used it, the more I actually think it is really nice. I love that they've included the feature here because I've actually found it useful for other things like when I'm doing a kind of a more aggressive drill bit, it actually is kind of nice for that as well. Okay, so there are a lot of the different new features about this drill. We're gonna go ahead and now show you the testing that we've done. We're just testing it against itself tonight. And then from there, I will come back and I'll tell you how I feel after having used the drill a little bit more and kind of where it's, I think it shakes out. All right, so you've just seen the performance testing. I'll have shown you some times and stuff. I know you don't really have a comparison point to that. We are going to have to put this drill up against other tools in the future. I think it'll be interesting to see where it shakes out. The bottom line of my kind of first impressions of this tool, I've had it roughly two weeks now, is it is really nice to use. Now, that was surprising to me because there are some things about this tool I don't like. I'll cover those in a minute. But everything from the trigger to the way the motor operates to the quality of the tool and the way it feels, it really is a nice well-built drill and the more I use it the more I find myself liking it and being drawn to some of its unique quirks and features. Case in point the clutch I am absolutely loving it and I love how it varies the speed and the function of the tool based on what setting you're in. It seems super precise and even though this is not a drill that I would use for necessarily precision work in terms of you know installing cabinet hinges or something like that I'd often go with a smaller more manageable tool but it really does have a lot of those inherent qualities of the smaller more precise tool in a bigger tool. Tool. Now, power-wise, I don't think you're necessarily buying this for the power and speed, but it still has the power and speed to do everything. It may not be able to do everything in speed too that some of the more premium drills on the market are doing today, but it can still get the job done. It does feature active safety on it, which is really nice and something I love to see on drills. The trigger is also something that is just really nice in terms of its control. It really is predictable when it's going to cut in and it is easy to modulate between the different speeds, and I find myself absolutely loving the trigger and the grip. Now, what are some of the things I don't like about the drill? Well, I mentioned at first, it is a longer drill. 
That's something that you can't hide. If you get the non-hammer drill variant, my understanding is that it does actually come in quite a bit shorter. This SB is the hammer drill version and it is going to be a little bit for a little bit longer. I think the other one is the BS model. The other thing I don't love is kind of the battery release. I failed to mention it earlier, kind of in my initial initial quirks, because it's not really a quirk to this tool, but more of a feature that you get is this is actually part of the CAS battery alliance, if you will, where this battery can be used with a number of different manufacturers. And so one power tool battery is going to work for a lot of different companies. Now, these are not companies that are all that common in the US market, unfortunately, but if you're in Europe, I think you're going to be running into those tool companies a lot more frequently. And I think that sort of cooperation is awesome between tool companies. If one bigger tool company can provide batteries for a lot of different smaller tool companies, you can really take advantage of unique tools on those different platforms to be able to do it. Because of that, they've created kind of this way of unleashing the battery. It's actually on the back of the drill here and it is almost counterintuitive. You have to push on the back of the battery, but then you have to pull the battery forward. Call it unfamiliarity with the tool. It's not nice to use. Because they're bigger batteries, you don't necessarily need to change them all that often, so maybe it's not a big deal. But if I'm being honest, it's one of the worst battery changes that I've seen on a tool. Now, in terms of availability of the tool, I think that is something else that I don't love. I purchased mine from Acme Tools. That's always been a good, reliable choice for me. Even at that, the availability on it is sometimes scattered. I remember I was thinking about purchasing this tool a couple of months ago, and when I was looking at it, it was actually going to be a three-week turnaround time from when I ordered it to when they would actually ship it out to me. The other day, I saw it in stock, and it would be shipped in two days, and so I finally went ahead and went for it. Now, I paid a little bit under 300 because of a promotion they were running at the time, but this runs pretty steady around the $330 price point. At that price point, you are getting the tool, the auxiliary handle, two batteries. It does come in Metabo's own little hard case, almost like Festool-like sustainer that is interlocking if you have more than one of them. And it does have nice room for everything. And I do think it is laid out well. It does feel maybe a little bit big for this tool, but I like that perhaps they've given you a little bit of extra room for expansion in the future. Although I'm not a huge fan of hard cases, this is a nice hard case and it certainly is going to protect the tool. Now this is by no means my first Metabo tool that I've owned, but it is my first Metabo 18 volt tool. I can't say that I've been all that impressed with their 12 volt line. There's a reason why they've been featured very sparingly on the channel because there's just not a lot that I have to say about them. But my opinion of the brand certainly has improved with this drill and it's got me intrigued to maybe try out some more of their tools and try out some of the different drills they have. I know a lot of you have inquired in the past about their three-speed metal drilling drill. Maybe that's something that's going to have to come to the channel eventually because I do think that is something that is unique and interesting and not really offered on a whole lot of drills. I bought this tool because I was intrigued by it but after buying it, I am definitely significantly more intrigued in the brand and the quality of the tools. They are certainly well made and seem like they are built to last. And that is something that is impressive and certainly something that I'm interested in looking into more. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more Metabo tools, go ahead and hit let me know down below. They are certainly intriguing power tools and I think it is something worth looking into. As always, thank you for the support and until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.